And a BBC News investigation has uncovered the abuse and neglect of disabled people in institutions in Ukraine. More than 100,000 children and young people live in facilities across the country. Most of them do have families, but poor community services mean the youngsters end up in a system that can't meet their needs. The country may be at war, but this is a problem that predates Russia's invasion. Human rights investigators say Ukraine shouldn't be allowed to join the EU until it abolishes this system, which is failing its most vulnerable people. I must warn you that this report by our correspondent Dan Johnson and producer Ruth Clegg does contain distressing images. Far from the front line. I've been to hundreds of institutions and they get a, a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. International investigators Eric and Helena are uncovering Ukraine's most shameful secret. The abuse and neglect of disabled people. Look into these cots and you see the smothered potential and stunted growth of lives stolen by a state system that is stuck in the past. These are not children. They're young men in their 20s or 30s. What you have here is failure to thrive because this is this person's life. Inside this crib, this is all of the stimulation he has. This person is dying a slow death in this bed. Here's an evacuee from the fighting in the east. But his suffering long predates the invasion. Oh my God, this is his ribs. This is his ribs hanging out. To have this kind of lack of development, that is a product of many years of neglect. He's skin and bones. <laughs> These places are relics of the Soviet era, long since left behind by other countries. But the director here says Ukraine still needs them. This is the situation as it is. I'm sure that for these children, instead of being in dysfunctional families where they could be uncared for without food, here we have all the essentials. We don't need material support, but we definitely need advice from doctors or other organizations because I understand nothing is ideal. An hour away. Another institution with its own sights and sounds. This is Vasil, a teenager, wearing a nappy and tied to a bench. And he's not the only one who's been restrained and left. There are signs, the staff can't cope. They went from 10 residents to 52 overnight, taking in those escaping the war. Like Victor, having physiotherapy to unravel his gnarled limbs. Rigid from years of institutional neglect. It's another painful illustration of a system that can seem rough and uncaring. <laughs> Three hours after we arrived, Vassil's still tied down. He wants to be free, and his frustration is growing. Vassil, like so many in these places, is not an orphan. His parents have come to see him. But not many visit their children. Vassil's mum and dad were told to give him up when he was five. He's now 18. If we lived in the UK, our son would probably live with us. We love our country. I am proud to be Ukrainian. But we need to have this support from our state. We would like to have better conditions and more stuff, of course. But this is the reality. The reality for generations of young Ukrainians. Their parents, the staff, everyone persuaded these institutions are where disabled people belong. This is remote, even by institutional standards. Deeper into the country, we get a vision of what Vassal's future could be like. A home for disabled adults from which there is no escape. <laughs> Don't 
they'll spend the rest of their lives here. Like Antonina, who's 26, tied down by staff in a system devoid of humanity. The nurse says there's nothing she can do to help Antonina. She says, unfortunately, nature has decided their fate. And it's this system that looks Natasha in the eye and says this is all your worth. The doctor says they have a bath once a week, but there aren't enough staff to take everyone outside. And down the corridor, we find Lesha, who does something you would not believe. So whenever he's unattended or his hands are not restrained, he takes his eyes literally out. She says that this is a big problem for her. She has to either carry him around after her, her or just constantly be watching him. But she's watching two rooms. Two rooms, 12 people to watch on a shift that is 24 hours long. And next door, there's more desperate need. The staff are consumed by the hopelessness of an unfeeling system that reduces life to this. We've seen children in distress, some of them clawing their own eyes. He does it all the time, and it's not the first time he has shocked people. Do you think they're actually feeling pain? Yes. And you're not doing anything to help? We try to help them. It doesn't mean that we are doing nothing, but our abilities are very limited. We are not able to change either the situation or a patient. They are as they are. And there it is, the stubborn shadow of a Soviet system, still darkening these places and the mindset that sustains them 30 years after Ukraine's independence. A mindset that could damage its hopes of joining the European Union. It's intolerable. If Ukraine wants to be part of the Western world, a law-abiding democracy, it can't write off children with disabilities. So for how much longer will Ukraine tell Viktor and Ivan and so many more, this is all they deserve in life? And Dan is with me. Uh, very, very distressing, Dan. Um, we should stress, though, this is uh, you're shining a light on something here that absolutely was going on well before the war began. Absolutely, yes. This is a hangover from the days when Ukraine was in the Soviet Union. It's been an independent country for 30 years now, and yet these children never seem to have been a priority. There were attempts a few years ago to start reforming this system, but the disabled young people have now been excluded from that, and those efforts have faltered now because of the war. No doubt the country is under pressure. It faces all kinds of of challenges and the solutions here according to the campaigners who are highlighting this anyway should be for those children to be supported either to stay living with their families or to get the sort of support that they would need to live independently in the community that's the sort of life they may have say in this country no doubt ukraine faces all these challenges because of the war but the people highlighting this think that could also be an opportunity there is so much international attention support there is a willing for Ukraine to move from being a, an EU candidate country to actually being a European Union member, but achieving that may mean addressing this issue. If those scenes feel familiar, you might be thinking of Romania 30 years ago, and Romania had to evolve its system in order to get into the EU. The message is that Ukraine needs to do more for these young people, needs to improve their lives if it's going to make the same sort of step. Dan, thank you for now, Dan Johnson. And if you'd like to see more about that you can see dan's documentary on the bbc iplayer you can search for locked away ukraine's stolen lives uh, on the iplayer app now